as long as they'll bite that full-size rodent, I'm gonna stick with it. Couple reasons, I mean, it's a big target, it's super soft, and I get to use a big hook. But there are always, anytime I'm doing this, I will always have a baby rodent rigged up on a smaller hook. Typically, if you're using an ounce to get that full-size rodent through, you can get a baby rodent through on a three-quarter. So I can always downsize a quarter of an ounce because it's tiny. And then there are other situations where the only way to get through a mat is to use a baby. And I'll use an ounce and three quarters. I try not to use a two ounce. I really like if you can get by with an ounce and a half or smaller. And it's not because they won't bite the bigger weight. The hookup is so much better. And I just find that the smaller weight you can get by with, you know, the better the, uh, the, better the hookup. But you always got to have that little one. And again, sometimes you're forced to use it regardless because it's the only thing that will penetrate the mat. And what you got to think of, when I got an ounce and a half or ounce and three quarters or even a two ounce, that baby rodent actually fits inside the weight. It's smaller than the weight. So if the weight goes through, there's no doubt it's going to go through behind it. There's nothing to hang. Just some things to think about. You know, mat fishing is, you, you could break it down just like any other technique. It can be bottom content. You know, it can be, they need a hard bottom under the mat. Sometimes a soft bottom. The weather's cold, I find a lot of times soft bottoms because they just suspend under there. They're not sitting on the bottom. Soft bottom's fine. Uh, it can be depth. I mean, it's typically, yeah, mat fishing is a pattern, but there's always a pattern inside a pattern. And really what's making this the best, what I figured, you know, here it's depth. These corners off these levees, there, there'll be one little section, you know, where the water's a, a foot and a half deeper. And that's been the whole deal. I've caught a few isolated fish just on a mat line where, you know, the water's, shallower and most of those have been males all those big ones better fish have all seemed to be tucked into that pocket where that water is a couple feet deeper you know another deal that's common for mat fishing is all right you see that grass i pitched to then is something different you know it's, it's where two different mats meet together and that's a, a lot of times is a big deal those fish will be lined up right on that crack between two types of vegetation now here we've got some hyson which is blown up and then we've got some vine primrose, I mean, there's all types of vegetation that make mats. I mean, I've been at Okeechobee before and the whole deal was anywhere you could find eelgrass that had been chopped up by boats and it had floated into cattails, you know. But fish love overhanging canopy, you know, and I don't care what part of the country, and we could be at Champlain and they get under mats. But here it is, February. I'm not recommending flipping mats at Champlain right now. You'd have to cut a hole to get through.